Again, we'll welcome you to another segment of our weekly Sunday School lesson. This is Pastor James Daniels, pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church located in Volula, Alabama. And what a joy it is to come with you again to share the Word of God that we may apply it to our daily lives and see how we can be better also in our families, in our churches, all over the land, who needs God now more than we ever needed Him before. Allow us to apply this lesson to our daily lives and also share it with others that they too may taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, once again we come, Father God, focusing on you. We come now asking you to enlighten the eyes of our heart that we may apply this lesson that we may gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your righteous ways. Bless these, your people, all over the land, those that are hurting, those in nursing homes, those that are, Father God, behind prison walls, that are those that are in hospital. We need you now more than we ever needed you before. And we ask you to bless us now as we focus on you and you alone. For these and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Again, this is part of our spring lesson, lesson number 11, May the 16th, 2021. Unit number three, Courageous Prophets of Change. Courageous Prophets of Change. But our topic this morning is the consequences of giving challenging advice. The consequences of giving challenging advice. A devotional reading is Jeremiah, the 38th chapter, verse 7 through 13, and chapter 39, verse 15 through 18. Our background scripture is Jeremiah, chapter 37 and 38. Our printed text is Jeremiah, the 38th chapter, verses 14 through 23. And our key verse is, is then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, If I declare it unto thee, wilt thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, wilt thou not hearken unto me? Jeremiah 38, verse number 15. Our lesson aims for this morning lesson says, Identify Jeremiah's hesitation to give controversial advice to Zedekiah. Number two, since Jeremiah's apprehension when talking to Zedekiah. Number three, commit to giving challenging godly advice. Our biblical context of this lesson said the weeping prophet Jeremiah prophesied during, the, during a dark period in Judah's history. Jeremiah was both priest and prophet who received his call and commission from God during his youth. His long-standing ministry spanned the reigns of the last five kings of Judah and extended into the years of the Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah preached against the dictator moral and spiritual life of the people and their civic and religious leaders. His passionate calls for repentance from sin and the return to God fell on deaf ears. He warned that God's judgment was imminent. Without success, Jeremiah urgently pleaded with his people to return to God so they would be spared from destruction. Instead of repenting, the people of Judah labeled this prophet as a traitor and then beat and imprisoned him and threatened him with death. The main theme of Jeremiah is judgment upon Judah for her apostasy and the promise of future restoration through God's grace and mercy. This week's lesson the lesson text unfolds prior to Judah's impending fall at Jeremiah's third meeting with King Zedekiah. When we look at our introduction, how do you feel when people offer stern advice that you don't want to hear? Are you secretly angry, openly impatient, 
quietly frustrated, or obviously resentful. Many people solicit or seek advice about challenging situation, then refuse to accept the advice if it isn't unflattering or uncomfortable to hear. Most of us are uncomfortable with honest advice that reveals our weakness, our mistakes, or our character flaws. Rather than face the truth with gratitude, some people project their discomfort, their anger, their insecurity, or other emotions on one who has the courage and compassion to tell the truth. The life in the ministry of the prophet Jeremiah is a vivid example of this very thing of consequences of telling the truth. The life and ministry of Jeremiah reigned for approximately 40 years. Jeremiah's unpopular message to the people of Judah was met with rejection, persecution, imprisonment, and even death threats. Centuries later, the Lord Jesus Christ would suffer the ultimate rejection for delivering the truth to a people who would eventually reject him. Everyone wants to hear messages of good news and blessings from the Lord. But those who are committed to sharing the whole truth of God's word, which may sometime include correction or rebuke, can expect to be rejected and treated unjustly by those who do not want to face their sins and even their shortcomings. Good advice can change your life, but not everyone is eager to hear it, even when it comes from God. The scripture bears witness that God's people rejected the prophet's message. This lesson hit home even today, as many struggle with the truth. As we watch high-ranking party members or officials feel ostracized because they stand for the truth. But there's often consequences for standing for what is right. My dad would often say that if you can offer advice, then you better be prepared to receive advice. Our first outline says a prophet's dilemma. Jeremiah chapter 38 verses 14 through 16. And verse 14 reads, Then Zedekiah, the king sent, and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him unto the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. And the king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing. Hide nothing from me. Verse 15, Then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, If I declare it unto thee, Will thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken unto me? Verse 16. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly unto Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord liveth that made us this soul, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee unto the hands of these men, that seek thy life. A prophet dilemma is understanding that doing right is always right, but it is rarely popular. This statement describes the ministry of Jeremiah. In verse 1 through 13, we see the reoccurring sense, the scene that Jeremiah had to endure because his message of judgment. Again, Jeremiah was cast into a miry dungeon because he advised people to leave the city and turn themselves over to the Babylonians. Zedekiah openly expressed his weakness. He could not swarf the will of the princes by protecting the prophet. An Ethiopian Enoch 
succeeded in having him pulled out with ropes and old clothes and rags and returned to the court of the prison. The king sent and had Jeremiah the prophet brought to him at the third entrance of the house of the Lord. As in Jeremiah 38, 16 through 17, King Zedekiah wanted a private meeting with Jeremiah. He said, if I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? I love the classic movie, A Few Good Men. And there's one particular scene that the lawyer, you know him as Lieutenant Daniel Caffey, played by Tom Cruise, is pressing the witness named Nathan R. Jessup, played by Jack Nicholson, to tell the truth. And the witness responds to him, you cannot handle the truth. And this is the same thing that Zedekiah begged Jeremiah to tell him the truth. But Jeremiah feared the king could not handle the truth. Jeremiah feared that at best he would be ignored. You will not listen to me. Or at worst, he would be put to death. I will not put you to death. Zedekiah swore to Jeremiah in the name of the Lord that he would not kill the prophet nor allow others to do so. Strangely, a king who did not live as the Lord swore an oath as the Lord liveth, but what credit was he given to his oath, who was notoriously known to be a prejudiced or perjured person as having broke the oath of fidelity to Nebuchadnezzar. People will often hesitate to give challenging advice, especially when they have already experienced unpleasant consequences for their honesty. Jeremiah hesitated to respond to the king, but not because of a lack of faith in God, from the time of his divine call to this prophetic ministry, Jeremiah had received an assurance of God's presence and protection. God's presence is with us. However, it does not necessarily exempt us from hardship and pain. Jeremiah's word to the king would be rejected just as the two previous ones. But God never holds the messenger accountable for the people response to him or her. The messenger's duty is simply is to deliver the word from the, from the Lord, whether it is accepted or rejected, regardless of any personal consequences. And this reminds me just like the mailman, his job or her job is to deliver the mail. But the mailman is not accountable to those who don't open up or those who don't even pay their bills. Our second outline is a prophet's advice. A prophet's advice. Jeremiah 38, verse 17 and 18. And verse 17 reads, Then Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, if thou will assuredly go forth unto the king of Babylon, princes, then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and thou shall live and thy house. Verse 18, but if thou will not go forth to the king of Babylon, princes, then shall this city be given unto the hands of of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hands. A prophet advice is that Jeremiah's message remain the same. If Zedekiah would adhere to the message, then lives would be saved. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel. Jeremiah agreed to take the risks and deliver God's message to King Zedekiah. 
In speaking through Jeremiah, God began the word by identifying himself. He was the Lord, Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel. He was the God of hosts, the God of heavenly armies and all their power. He was the God of Israel, the master and the Lord of the covenant, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jeremiah said, if you surely surrender to the kings of Babylon princes, then your soul shall live. This was not a new world to Zedekiah. Perhaps it was a new urgency, but it was not a new world. The Babylonians was God instrument of judgment against Judah and therefore resistance against them was foolish and futile. It was better to surrender to them and to God's will. This was God's remarkable patience and mercy to a king who rejected God's word many and many times before. Zedekiah could not prevent the conquest of Jerusalem by his repentance, but he could make the conquest much less severe. Even now, at this late hour, if he surrendered, his soul shall live. He would survive and not put to death. If he surrendered, the city shall not be burned with fire. Jerusalem will be spared from total destruction. If he surrendered, your house shall live. His wives, his children, and royal family will be largely spared from death. Jeremiah says, surrender to the king of Babylon princes. Zedekiah knew what it was to surrender to princes. He shamefully surrendered to the princes of Judah. Jeremiah 38 and 4. Through Jeremiah, God warned Zedekiah to surrender to the right princes. This city shall not burn with fire. The fate of the city rested on one man's repentance and trust in the Lord. Surrender to the Babylonian would spare the city of Jerusalem. They would be conquered but not destroyed and burned with fire. Everyone would answer to God for their deeds. Therefore, God's people must take his word seriously. Preachers and teachers of the gospel must not be tempted to compromise God's truth to please people. God warns against adding or taking away from his word. Doing what God requires, take courage that is strengthened by an intimate relationship with God and a rich understanding of his word. God is still looking for men and women with a spirit of Jeremiah, person who have the courage to speak the word regardless of the consequences. Our third and final outline says a leader's folly, a leader's folly. Jeremiah 38, verse 19 through 23. And verse 19 says, And Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hands and they mock me. Verse 20, But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord which I speak unto thee, so it shall be well with thee, and thy soul shall live. 21. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord hath showed me. Verse 22. And behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women shall say, Thy friends have set thee on, and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are sunk into the mire, and they are turned away back. Verse 23. So they shall bring out thy wives and, that, and thy children of the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape out of their hands. 
but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon. And thou shalt cause this city to be burned with fire. A leader's folly is understanding that Zedekiah wanted to hear the word of the Lord, but fear and pride caused him to reject the very words he insisted on hearing. Zedekiah was a weak, immoral, and decisive leader. He says, I'm afraid of the Jews who have defected to the Chaldeans. Like all of us, Zedekiah could always think of a reason why obedience to God wasn't such a good idea. He thought that those who had already defected to the Chaldeans might abuse him in some way. Once again, Zedekiah's weakness of character shows up. There was a course of action to be followed, which he knew to be right, but he lacked the moral courage to take it. Please obey the voice of the Lord. Jeremiah appealed to the king, knowing that always the safest thing to do is to obey the voice of the Lord. That would be a blessing for obedience. It shall be well with you and your soul shall live and a curse for disobedience. They shall surrender all your wives and children to the Chaldean. Your close friends have set upon you. Jeremiah spoke a short piece of poetry, voicing the devastation of, of the wives and the children of Zedekiah and Jerusalem would feel at the violence and destruction that would come if the king continued his disobedience to God. This was strong courageous word Jeremiah brought to Zedekiah. The king had pre previously shown his mercy and promised him bread. Jeremiah 37 and 21. But the bread the king put in his mouth of the prophet did not prevent Jeremiah from speaking the truth to Zedekiah. They shall surrender all your wives and children to the Chaldean. You shall cause this city to be burned with fire. Nothing could change the fact that, and as God's instrument, the Babylonian would conquer Judah and Jerusalem. Yet the obedience or disobedience of one man could determine the extent of the misery and destruction in that conquest. Nothing is more marked throughout history than the absolute and unswerving loyalty of Jeremiah to the message of judgment, which he was called to deliver. Zedekiah, on the other hand, had more fear of the people than he had fear of God. That fatal fear blinded him in every chance to repent and to save his life, his family, and his city. Today, God still calls his people to repentance. Many people like courage and fear the consequences of turning from their sin. But God's presence, his power, and his provision are still available to anyone who dares to take God at his word. When we consider the prophet Jeremiah, there are often very real consequences of speaking unpopular or unpleasant truth from God's word. The scripture are a mirror that often force people to see themselves as God see them. It challenged them to either change or remain the same. Those who resist changing in response to the word often blame or ridicule the messenger charging them with meddling or being judgmental rather than choosing to repent. Jeremiah was a bold, uncompromising prophet who suffered abuse and received death threats for his unwavering commitment to deliver God's word. The condition of our world 
in this generation demand more Jeremiah who will stand on God's word without compromise, even when opposed by voices in the church and in popular culture. Every believer has the responsibility to speak God's truth with love to those who seek advice and even to those who do not. A courageous commitment to truth involves accepting the possibility of difficult consequences that results from personal conviction. Like Jeremiah, we must be the gospel message to tell the world that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't have to fix it up. All we have to do is tell the story that God loved through his son Jesus, who went to Calvary's cross to die for the sins of this world, and that the fact that he still lives and that he still saves, and that the door of opportunity to repent is always available if you will seek forgiveness by confessing your sins. This is a beautiful lesson that we all must stand on the truth. Even though the consequences might be great, even though we may be persecuted, we must tell them what thus says the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, once again, we thank you again for your lesson. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are and what you have done. Give us the courage to stand, to tell folks what it is that the word of God has said, that you are merciful, that you're gracious, that you're forgiven, and that the door always swing open for you to forgive us from our sins. Have mercy upon us right now. Forgive us for our many sins, for we have fallen short. But we thank you for Jesus who, Father God, bridge the gap that we may come back home. We give glory, honor, and praise unto your holy name, for you truly are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. May God bless you, may keep you until we meet you again for another segment of our weekly Sunday school. Again, this is Pastor James Daniel, pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you, may keep you is our prayer.